In this video, we're going to take a look at solving a compound inequality. A compound inequality is made up of two or more parts connected by some type of operator. In this case, we have OR. In OR, compound inequality requires one or both of the inequalities to be true. It doesn't matter which inequality tr is true, as long as at least one of them is true, or both. We can start solving these inequalities much like we solve basic inequalities. By balancing, adding 5 to both sides on the first inequality, 2x minus 5 is greater than 3. When we add 5, we get 2x is greater than 8. And then finally, when we divide by 2, we get x is greater than 4. The other inequality, 4 minus x is greater than or equal to 6, we can solve by subtracting 4 from both sides, giving us negative x is greater than or equal to 2, and finally dividing both sides by negative 1. Be careful as we do this, because we've divided by a negative, we need to flip the inequality symbol, giving us x is less than or equal to negative 2. As we graph this result on a number line, let's take a look at what results we end up with. We're going to graph the x is greater than 4 first. Starting at 4, let's float it above the number line. We need an open circle, and because the x is the greater value, opening up to the x, we go off to the right, finding greater values. Graphing the other inequality, x is less than or equal to, uh, crossed off the or equals to, sorry, negative 2, means we have a closed dot at negative 2, and because x is smaller, pointing at the x, less, we want smaller values going off to the left. To decide what makes it onto our final graph, we look at our operator, or. OR tells us everything needs to be on the final graph, except the space there is nothing. Notice between 2 and 4, neither inequality seems to be true. This is the spot that needs to be blank on our graph. But the 2 down, including the number 2, does make the final cut. 4 up, not including the 4, also makes the final cut. Anything on this graph, then, makes the inequality true. If we're in the negative 2 down range, the second part of the compound inequality is true. If we are in the above 4 range, the first part of the inequality is true. And because we have an OR compound inequality, our only requirement is that one OR the other be true. Let's take a look at how we would represent this in interval notation. Remember, interval notation describes the graph from left to right. On the far left side, we see it going off to negative infinity, and stopping at negative 2. While infinity always gets a curved bracket, negative 2 needs a square bracket to show we're or equal to the 2. Then the graph starts again at 4, with a curved bracket, because we're not equal to 4, and goes up to infinity, which is always curved. To show that there's two parts to this graph that we want to join together, we use a union symbol, which looks like a horseshoe pointing up. This becomes our final answer in interval notation. This tells us that any value between negative infinity and negative 2, including negative 2, or any value from 4 to infinity, will make one or both of the original inequalities true.